During the dark days, I was privileged to take part in the two-day ethereal Beowulf event. Now, most of you are familiar somewhat, at least, with the Beowulf story. And you know how in his youth, Beowulf fought Grendel and his mother. And later, how he died fighting the dragon. But in his middle years, the swaggering hero attempted to play the diplomat, the elder statesman. So here he is, warning Hrothgar, the king of the Danes, not to trust the Havabards to keep the peace, even if he weds his daughter to the Havabard prince. Oh. Now, as you know, Beowulf is Scandinavian, and so a properly pronounced reading would frankly sound like the Swedish chef. Now, <laughs> I spent 15 years in Nordshield, don't you know? So I could do that, Derry, but I would like to give it a more serious reading, more in keeping with my Anstiorian origins. So Beowulf is speaking here in the scene. When that son of the half Dane knew my purpose, he found me a place at once on the bench where his own son sat. The throng were joyful. In my whole life, I never saw such mead revelry amongst all guests. The famous queen, the people's peace pledge, passed through the hall, urging her young sons. Often she gave out twisted gold rings before taking the seat. Before the hall fans, Rothgar's daughter offered the ale cup to the earls in turn. The floor sitters called her Freoaru. I heard that name when she handed the studded cup to the heroes in that place. Promised is she, gold adorned and young, to the heir of Frodo. The king of the shieldings, the kingdom's keeper, thought to arrange this. He thinks it wise to wed the woman, ward off a feud and settle slaughter. But seldom ever, when fighting is finished, does the feud spear rest, even for the briefest while though the bride is good. Perhaps he'll be unhappy, the Havabard's prince, and each battle fain in his band akin when he walks on the wood with that woman at his side. And noble sons of Danes are received with honor, shining at their waists the wealth of ancestors, hard and ring-adorned Havabard treasures, as long as their hands could hold weapons till their own lives were led to do with their beloved companions in Linden Plain. Then the old ash warrior, who always remembers all the men spear deaths, spies the ring hilt, speaks over beard, his spirits grim. Sad-minded, he undertakes to test the soul of a young champion with his innermost thoughts to awaken the war bale. These words he speaks. Can you discern? Can you discern that sword, my friend? That costly iron. It was carried to the fight in your father's hands on his final journey of dying in the war mask when the Danes failed him, held the battlefield when heroes were routed and Vithergild was vanquished. Those valiant skildings. Now. One of the slayers is he, preening with his precious steel, proudly murder boasting, he walks on this wood, wears the treasure, owns the heirloom, which ought by right be yours. At every opportunity he urges and reminds with cruel word gift, till comes the time when the bride's escort, owing to his father's deeds, and the bite of a sword is bloodstained in sleep forfeits his life. His foe at that point escapes alive in country he knows well. Then both factions will break their words. The old swearings of earls, the anger boils up in Prince Ingeld. Afterwards comes the cool in wife love and the waxing of his cares. Thus I expect on the part of the Havabards that the Danish treaty is troubled by deceit and their friendship not fast. Now I've said my piece.